Hello and welcome to a Spirited Debate. I'm Lauren Green. For the first time in his presidency, Barack Obama will visit a U.S. mosque. Mr. Obama will meet with the Islamic Center of Baltimore this week, a visit the White House billed as an opportunity to, quote, celebrate American Muslims and reject bigotry in the country. The appearance comes at a time, though, when public sentiment towards Muslims is at the nation, uh, in the nation is at their lowest. Here with reaction is Salam Bhatti, a national spokesperson for the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. community. Welcome, Salam. Thanks for having me. So just your, your reaction to this, because you seem, you're really excited about this. This is a fantastic opportunity, and uh, we, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community USA, mem uh, Muslims who believe in the Messiah, Mirza Ghulam Mahmud of Ghadian, are very grateful to President Obama for including Muslims in this dialogue. I mean, as you stated, it's a very tense time for Muslims. A lot of rhetoric is coming out against us, and there's a lot of actions like shootings at mosques, uh, vandalism, defacing mm -hmm. mosques, and hurting people who even look like Muslims. So since that's at an all-time high, it's very important that we have this conversation that President Obama is bringing to a mosque now. Now, you know, this is a, it, it is a good thing, but, you know, it is coming late in his presidency. Why do you think it's been so late? Because there have been several mosques, several Muslim organizations have said to the President of the United States, come to a mosque here in the United States. He's gone to mosques in the Middle East and, other, and elsewhere, but never here in the U.S. I mean, what does, that, what does that say to you? Well, we're not ungrateful for his first uh, time coming. Uh, our focus has always been on, more on getting local Muslims to come to our mosques because that is where the true teachings of Islam are taught. And we want to make sure that our neighbors and our friends also come to our mosques so that we can effectuate that change mm -hmm. on a grassroots level. I mean, it's great that the president is coming. He's always invited us to his house, and we're glad that he's finally accepting an invitation to our house of God. You know, in the Middle East, we hear about the Sunni-Shiite division. The Ahmadiyyas are really very different from them. Explain how. So, uh, briefly, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community believes in Mirza Ghulam Ahmad as a reformer prophet who came to bring Muslims back to what true Islam is. Now, as we see in the world today, there's a lot of discord and disorder uh, coming from Muslims who believe they are practicing Islam uh, accurately and appropriately. But that is not the case. They have been misguided. And what uh, Ahmad came to do was to bring them back to what true Islam actually is. Yeah, there's a tightrope that the president is ro walking right now because even though he has professed um, he, that he is a Christian, uh, a recent poll, CNN, our, um, our ORC poll, said that, uh, surveyed Americans, 29% of Americans actually view Obama as a Muslim, and uh, like 43% of Republicans do. What do you make of this? Why do people have this view of him as a Muslim? It's an inherent uh, problem with education. Uh, they see somebody with a name like Barack Hussein Obama and think just because he has an Arab-sounding name, he's a Muslim. Uh, there was a recent shooting in Santa Monica by somebody with the last name Al-Zawahiri, and they instantly, immediately think that this is a Muslim person, but in fact he was a Lebanese Christian. Mm -hmm. So what we need to let people know is that there is a, a lot of people out there in this world with all sorts of names, and as a result they have all sorts of ideas. Some can be good and some can be bad. Now, how do you fight the image of ISIS uh, for people here in the United States that believe that all Muslims are actually, you know, not all Muslims, but they associate, um, you know, Islam with being a terrorist? The Ahmadiyya Muslim community just recently, just last month, launched a campaign called True Islam and the Extremists. And what we seek to do is to unite Muslims and non-Muslims to distinguish true Islam from the extremists. Through this effort, we're going to be able to promote national security. And what we're trying to do is so showing people through 11 points that these are the basic principles of what Islam actually is, as taught by the Quran and by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So these misteachings that are going around from extremist groups, that's not what Islam is. So what we need to do as a community, as a community of Americans, is show disaffected youth that what they're about to do, if they're going to join an extremist group, is not right, and this is what true Islam is, because this is something we all have to do together. All right, I want to thank you so much. Uh, uh, Salam Bhatti, thank you very much. Thanks for having us, and I hope your viewers visit us at trueislam.com. All right, thanks so much. And thank you also for being here. Thanks for watching A Spirited Debate. I'm Lauren Green.